Good morning and thank you for joining me for a moment of devotion. We're going to do something a little different this week. We're going to actually read a chapter for our devotional time and go from there. So I've been led to start with the book of Galatians. So we're going to start with Galatians chapter 1 and it reads as follows. Greetings from Paul. This letter is from Paul, an apostle. I was not appointed by any group of people or human authority but by Jesus Christ himself and by God the Father who raised Jesus from the dead. All the brothers and sisters here join me in sending this letter to the churches of Galatia. May God our Father, the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, give you the grace and peace. Jesus gave his life for our sins just as God our Father planned in order to rescue us from the evil world in which we live. All glory to God forever and ever. Amen. There is only one good news. I am shocked that you are turning away so soon from God who called you to himself through the, the loving mercy of Christ. You are following a different way that pretends to be the good news, but it is not the good news at all. You are being fooled by those who deliberately twist the truth concerning Christ. Let God's curse follow anyone, including us, or even an angel from heaven who preaches a different kind of good news than the one we preach to you. I say again that we have said before, if anyone preaches any other good news than the one you've welcomed, let that person be cursed. Obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. Paul's message comes from Christ, verse 11. Dear brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that the gospel message I preach is not based on mere human reasoning. I received my message from no human source, and no one taught me. Instead, I received it as by direct revelation from Christ Jesus. You know what I was like when I followed the Jewish religion, how violently I persecuted God's church. I did my best to destroy it. I was far ahead of my fellow Jews in zeal for the traditions of my ancestors. But even before I was born, God chose me and called me by his marvelous grace. Then it pleased him to reveal his son to me so that I would proclaim the good news of Jesus to the Gentiles. When this happened, I did not rush out to consult with any human being nor did I go up to Jerusalem to consult with those who were apostles before I was. Instead, I went into the Arabia, and later I returned to the city of Damascus. Then three years later, I went to Jerusalem to get to know Peter, and I stayed with him for 15 days. The only other apostle I met at the time was James, the Lord's brother. I declared before God that I am writing to you is not a lie. After that visit, I went north to the provinces of Syria and Sicilia, and still the Christians in the church in Judea didn't know me personally. All they knew was that people were saying, the one who used to persecute us is now preaching the very faith he tried to destroy, and they have praised God because of it. So what I take from that chapter of scripture is that no matter what we do, what we set out in life, that God can always turn it around because he, he calls us from our mother's womb. He knew us back then. He knew what paths we would take in life. He knew what choices we would make. He would knew what every wrong choice, every good choice we would make. And no matter what, our testimony can still proclaim the good news and shine a light towards him. I hope y'all have an amazing rest of your day, and thank you for joining me for a moment of devotion.